Happy March Equinox. Oh, yeah. You knew that's what we're going to talk about today, and I've got a great chart for us to look at on it as well. Hi, Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Obviously, one of the two bigger days of the year in astrology, this is the March Equinox. Spring in the Northern Hemisphere, fall in the Southern. But either way, this is the day that day and night are equal. Also significant in that this is one of the angular points on the astrology wheel. The first house, Aries, this equinox. The June solstice, Cancer. The September equinox, Libra. And the December solstice, Capricorn. Those amplified astrological points of the year. So, in a way, for those of us who use the tropical western zodiac, this is like New Year's Day. We completed Pisces. We completed the 12th house. Now we begin anew. Now let's do something that has been working really well here lately, and that's let's use the moment that the sun crosses into Aries as the natal chart of this March equinox. Mine is set to Asheville, North Carolina, and the time ended up being 5.24.27 p.m. today. Now there is one other aspect I'd like to mention that is super significant because it involves the sun. And that's an hour and 10 minutes before the equinox. The sun sextiles Pluto. Pluto is large and in charge right now, especially this week, because, as we all know, it moves into Aquarius on Thursday. Just a reminder that we do have a new moon tomorrow, and that too will be in Aries. So in this context of Pluto having just had an aspect with the sun, the sun now moves into Aries. One other, by the way, I stumbled onto something over the weekend that was phenomenal related to Pluto moving into Aquarius, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. It's going to kind of blow your blow your mind a little bit, I think. Make sure to catch tomorrow's podcast. So my 5.24.27 p.m. Asheville, North Carolina chart is a two-degree Virgo rising. Right there, the sky is giving us a message because we've been talking about the Earth signs, the Earth grounding as an offset to this energy of Saturn moving into Pisces, the watery Saturn now, go figure on that one, and then Pluto moving into Aquarius on Thursday, that air energy, the offset to that. Even the Sun moving into Aries now, we could talk about grounding, the practicality of Virgo. But you're going to see a theme unfolding here, and the Virgo desire to have everything in order, I think, is a big piece of this theme. So it starts right there with the rising sign. We want to take a look at our lives and see what may not be in order. What have we put off? What have we not resolved? And it's going to be safe. It's going to be okay. It's going to be encouraged by the energies of the universe to help us shore those areas up, if we will dare to look at them, because this equinox takes place on the cusp of the 8th house, (laughs) which is ruled by Scorpio, something that I happen to be an expert with. And one of the things about Scorpio is it's okay to go deep into the closet. It's okay to bring up the bones. And actually, we have Chiron and Jupiter in the 8th house in, in the middle degrees of Aries. Do you see how this theme is building? So in other words, the Jupiter Chiron from the positive perspective is that the old wounds that your soul brought into this life to heal are being amplified right now, or the ability to find out more about them is being amplified. Jupiter, I've been experiencing this whole new perspective on the Chiron wounds in my life came just over the last week. Find where your Chiron is and look at the themes of that house and sign, and you'll start to get the clues. And then ask the universe, ask God, ask source, ask your home office, (laughs) broadly, (laughs) for help. Acknowledging you want to come to the table to heal. You're even willing to experience a little bit of pain for a lot of gain. That's the theme of the eighth house. It's about transformation. By the time you leave the 8th house and you go into the house of spirituality, you've done the work. You left the pain in the 8th where it can die. Stop digging up old bones. Once you've dealt with it, then release it. It's time to move on. 
But Chiron does represent that wound that seems to be with us always, and that just means peeling the onion. So as you peel the onion and you find a new layer, deal with it, leave it in the eighth house, and move on to the ninth. Now, I said, if you noticed, that it was on the cusp of the eighth house, but the sun and the moon are actually in the seventh house, along with Neptune. So there's a partnership, and if you want to go that far, relationship aspect to this equinox. Particularly if it is happening in your life, either, and this could be business, it could be personal, whatever, but a new beginning to a relationship is highly amplified. So would be completing one, because Pisces is the ruling cusp in the equal house system of the seventh house. So if you need to complete a relationship, do it boldly under this energy. It's going to be okay especially as you're beginning your new as the sun moves into the eighth. You'll do the transformational work and you'll move on. Another theme would be Neptune in there in Pisces at 25 degrees. Just make sure that all the cards are on the table. Don't be hiding anything. As we're doing this Virgoan putting everything in order, make sure that if, you're, if there are any secrets, just clean it up. Now, the two big boys that we do have to talk about briefly, Saturn is on the cusp of the seventh house, but it is located in the sixth. A lot of you have been changing jobs. This is also a health focus. And let's bring Pluto into the conversation, too, because it is right on the cusp of the sixth house, but it is in the fifth house. So we have Saturn sitting in the sixth house, right on the cusp of the seventh. Pluto is in the fifth house, right on the cusp of the sixth for this natal chart, if you will of Equinox March 2023. A lot of you are wanting to start new ventures. Pluto is sitting right on the cusp, and it will be there and bake there for the next two years. So go ahead. Don't be afraid to be revolutionary, particularly related to things of work. And again, with Saturn on the way out of the 6th and into the 7th, there's your cleansing or your reckoning of work and relationship areas. Maybe that work relationship needs some modification. Maybe your personal relationships or your personal partnerships need some modification. And then one other, let's point out, Venus, the money planet in the money sign, is up in the ninth house. Those of you thinking about spiritual work, you ought to take a look at it now. Also because Mars, which has kind of been the cosmic bad boy over the last six months as it's been in Gemini, is in the tenth house getting ready to approach the cusp of the eleventh so there is a lot of energy and a lot of new energy. And remember, it rules Aries. So there's a lot of new energy in careers right now. Okay, there's the natal chart. That's why I didn't cover much else today. But I uh, hope that sets things up for this equinox for you. It's really a pretty cool way to look at it. Now, we will pull the spotlight back on Pluto as it moves into Aquarius and look at some stuff that I think you're going to be going, wow, do that tomorrow. Have a great day.